I'm so pleased to welcome to the show today Mother Olga of the Daughters of Mary of Nazareth. She's joining us now in studio. Thank you so much for being with us, Mother Olga. Thank you, Rachel, for having me. It's a great blessing to be here. Thank we're, you. We're so honored to have you here. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the Order of Sisters that you recently started in the diocese. I know it's been a few years. Yeah, Daughters of Mary of Nazareth, uh, um, we received the official blessing from Cardinal Sean in December 2011. And uh, thanks be to God, it continues to grow by the grace of God and protection of Our Lady and St. Joseph. And our convent currently is in Quincy and it's named St. Joseph of Nazareth. And we have our first two uh, 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 professed sisters in simple vows. And we have um, three novices and we have postulants and we have uh, uh, new women who are uh, now in the first stage of their discernment with us. Um, so thanks be to God, it continued to grow and uh, building the foundation uh, so it's been almost uh, five years now um, because we received the blessings in December, but the, the first group of sisters uh, entered on the Feast of Visitation uh, in uh, 2012. Okay. This is not the first order of nuns that you started. Um, Tell me about that. Correct. By the grace of God and help of Our Lady, uh, when I was in Iraq and uh, I was a member of the Assyrian Church of the East and, uh, and the first community that I started there by the grace of God was uh, called the Sisters of Martha Mariam, which is uh, it's a title for Our Lady in the Aramaic language. And uh, that was founded in uh, 1996 in Iraq, which was the first Assyrian order in 700 years. Um, and um, thanks be to God, now they do have uh, sisters from that community also in India because uh, our patron uh, of the Assyrian um, church uh, is St. Thomas, the apostles. He began in the area of Mesopotamia and then to China and then to India. So we have Assyrian people now in India and we have some of the Assyrian sisters are in India. Um, so thanks be to God, they are there. Um, but then after I became in communion with the Roman Catholic Church, I had to leave that community because I have to, you know, be in vows under the, the bishop where I am in communion with the church. Unity is an important theme that you are considering and praying about. Talk to me a little bit about that, especially in light of things going on in the world and especially our country, the importance of unity among you know, just all of God's people. Um, correct. Unity has been always a theme that's very important, um, you know, to me and in my heart. First and foremost, because it's a theme that's very close to the Lord's heart, as we know from the prayer that He prayed, and it's it's one of the longest prayer that we, you know, read re about it really in the Gospel of John that they all may be one, as He and the Father are one. And you know, I I came from a part of the world that I saw so much division growing up as a child, as you know. I grew up in four wars and I saw so much, you know, hatred and anger and revenge and and all that because there, you know, was really causing lack of unity among people, um, all the different, you know, ethnic groups and, and even among people of the same religion um, and, and, and faith tradition and then the neighboring countries and, you know, the eight years of war between Iraq and Iran and then Kuwait and just like so much turmoil because of, you know, um, lack of unity and, and increase in hatred and violence. So um, I felt that deep call in my heart to um, work on building bridges and bringing people together. And uh, so first, before even I started the first religious order in Iraq, um, I began a, a small lay movement called Love Your Neighbors. And it was um, bringing together young people, uh, both Muslims and Christians, and Muslims of both the Shiites and the Sunnis and Christians of all the different denominations to come together, collect, you know, uh, leftover foods from various neighborhoods and uh, markets, uh, places and restaurants and, and also clothes, old clothes from different neighborhoods and families to take them to different places where people lost everything because of war and they didn't have any more, you know, like uh, whether elderly people to have their children to care for them or vice versa to have children who didn't have family anymore to care for them. So that was really the beginning of, you know, foundation for the work of unity to bring the Muslims and Christians together or the Christians of different faith background. And then the Lord brought me here to a country um, 
where um, I felt there was a lot of misunderstanding between, you know, the people of Middle East and America. Um, and unfortunately, it continues to some extent. Um, so I traveled to Middle East um, in 19, uh, 2007 to 2008, uh, particularly to visit our American troops uh, as an Iraqi religious sister. And it was something very new, you know, to them. They never had an Iraqi religious sister to visit them. Um, and I wanted to be there particularly for Christmas uh, to be with our American troops who couldn't come home because again I wanted to express that uh, you know sign of solidarity and unity that to minimize that um, again that element of um, anger or you know misunderstanding and, and even hatred at times unfortunately um, and then you know here I, I, I try to do the same and just recently when I was invited to speak at the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast I tried to bring that message as well because we live in a very divided time unfortunately um, in the last you know 15 years that I have lived here, I've seen a number of elections, presidential elections, and no matter who gets elected, you know, there is the, that 50-50 always, you know, uh, anger and confusion and discomfort. And, you know, um, I remember that was the case um, four years ago, eight years ago, and now the same in, in this time that we live in. So how to try to bring that message of uh, prayer and love that, you know, we are American first before, you know, uh, being members of any party and we have to go back to the roots and the foundation of our country, how our forefathers came to build this nation as a one nation under God, as, as people of faith and people of freedom and people of goodness. So it's, it's a hard work. It's not easy because um, it's, um, as I say, it, it's a work that we have to reach out to everyone. Um, but I remember when I was at Boston University just a few years ago as a campus minister, I was invited to speak, uh, to deliver the invocation at the commencements. I speak um, different languages, Arab uh, Aramaic and Hebrew and Arabic and English. Even though I was invited as a Catholic sister, but Boston University has about 40% of Jewish population, Jewish students, and we had a lot of Arab students from Middle East. So I chose that my invocation prayer to be uh, included of uh, some of the Hebrew prayers, some of the Arabic prayers, and some English to again bring everyone together. And it was very moving to uh, all the students who graduated during that year. Beautiful. Those kind of efforts are so important, make Amen. such a difference. Thank Amen. you so much for being with Welcome. us, Mother Olga. You're Welcome. such a blessing. Thank and I pray you. that God keeps using you mightily Amen. in all you're doing. Amen. For His glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us, and we're going to send it back to more of the gist. <laughs>